It's a new year, it's a new day, and Mickey Mouse has finally come under public domain, or has he? Uh, there seems to be some disagreement out there, and some YouTubers are already bearing the consequences of the confusion. Or is there confusion, or is someone just being a malicious mouse? Let's talk about that on That Park Place. I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place, and with me, as always, is my Wookiee co-pilot, Vash Sky. Vash, are, are you proud and honored when I call you a Wookiee co-pilot? Do, do you understand that as a term of affection? Oh, absolutely I do. Yes, yes. Platonic a, affection, though. Platonic. You know, back in the old canon, uh, uh, what is it, Chewie had a life debt embed in, in, indebted to, uh, to, to Han Solo. I like to think I have a life debt to you, Oh, my friend here. Well, so. that's great. I'll, I'll try not to abuse that life debt. Uh, I actually really did like Solo. Uh, everyone kill me in the comments now. Uh, wow. Today, we are talking about uh, the Disney company, though, and their abuse of another creator's works. Uh, that would be Walt Disney himself and Mr. Ub Iwerks. Uh, as, as everyone out there might know, Mickey Mouse is in the public domain. Or is he? Or is it just Steamboat Willie? Uh, Mickey Mouse hits the public domain, but don't expect to get a free ride on Steamboat Willie. <laughs> This one by Dominic Patton out of Deadline. Uh, so as as we can see here, this was published January 1st, 2024. Uh, Dominic Patton, a uh, excellent reporter over there from Deadline. As of today, the traditionally protective Walt Disney Company will have to deal with an onslaught of Mickey Mouse parodies, mockeries, and likely rather explicit variations as the iconic character slips into public domain. Sort of. In the sober light of 2024, Steamboat Willie, the 1928 short that affectionately launched the empire that Walt built, can now be used by anyone and everyone. The legal status of Mickey and Minnie Mouse from Steamboat Willie and Plain Crazy from earlier that same year has been fought over and probably not something to which Disney is looking forward. Um, also, there's a there's another character uh, that is also in the public domain that comes from Steamboat Willie, and that would be uh, that would be Pete. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite Disney characters, in fact, because he can both be uh, both a hero and a villain and a good pal to Goofy if you uh, follow Goof Troop and that, uh, a Goofy movie. That's true. Also, Minnie is also depicted there. That's true. That's true. And it's the Minnie Mouse that's just wearing a skirt. So uh, I, I, I'm not looking forward to uh, parodies of that. Besides Disney being notoriously litigious, the color version of Mickey that came into being in 1935's band concert is a lot different in 2024 than the non-speaking Mickey of Steamboat Willie in 1928. Uh, so <laughs> let's move a little bit further to uh, where people are, um, where the danger might be. Uh, this is a quote from Disney, and this is the reason for uh, our discussion today. Hmm. Uh, a Disney spokesperson said of the do's and don'ts of the sound synced film entering the public domain today, we will, of course, continue to protect our rights in the more modern versions of Mickey Mouse and other works that remain subject to copyright. And we will work to safeguard against consumer confusion caused by unauthorized uses of Mickey and our other iconic characters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The company added that the Steamboat Willie-inspired horror game Infestation 88, having already dropped a trailer earlier today and many memes rolling out. Ooh. Um, do, do you think that Disney is just going to let all these go? Uh, do you think we're going to get a couple of days here and then they're just going to attack everybody for the money, for the pocket change that they, uh, <laughs> they so rightly deserve? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it depends on a lot of factors. I don't think they're going to be going after everybody, but I can assure you they are going to make an example out of someone. Uh, that's a very good point, and we're going to talk about uh, that in just a minute. I, I think it's uh, fascinating, of course, that the first thing out of the gate is uh, Disney saying, be careful. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> this, yes. This one, uh, similar out of Hollywood Reporter, Mickey Mouse will soon belong to you and me with some caveats. <laughs> this one is actually by the Associated Press, which we've covered their coverage uh, recently. I wonder uh, which Associated Press author... Uh, wrote this one. If it might be that same guy that uh, talked about how great the governance was of uh, Reedy <laughs> Creek Improvement District. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, that here's it. Same. Here's a little bit of cuteness. M I C K E Y will soon belong to you and me with several asterisk qualifications and caveats. Uh, first of all, he can't kill anybody. Second of all, he can't make you fall in love. And third, <laughs> What are the other rules of the genie? Uh, Mickey Mouse, in his you earliest wish form, wishes. will be the leader of a band of characters, films, and books that will become public domain as the year turns to 2020. What a great year this is going to be. I, oh. I'll tell you what. Just oh, full it's of sunshine. starting out with a banger already. 
This is it. This is Mickey Mouse. This is exciting is because it's kind of symbolic, said Jennifer Jenning, Jenkins, a professor of law and director of Duke's Center for the Study of Public Domain, who writes an annual January 1st column for Public Domain Day. I kind of feel like the pipe on the steamboat, like expelling spoke. It's so exciting. Man. The uh, the history of this is fascinating, by the way. So this goes back to the Copyright Term Extension Act, uh, or as it was known as the Sonny Bono Act, or even the Mickey Mouse Protection Act, effective October 27, 1998. And following mm-hmm. the Copyright Act of 1976, which pushed off copyright and acts falling within a public domain until the death of the author, plus 50 years, or 75 or 100, and it gets a little complicated after that. Right. The 1998 Act extended those provisions until the death of the author plus 70 years. And, well, <laughs> who was the big biggest pusher of something like that? Well, it was actually Disney. How do we know? Because it included works 1923 and beyond, <laughs> right. which people will know. That's, you know, uh, when uh, the Walt Disney uh, Studios was originally formed. Right. So uh, does that mean that Oswald is in the public domain, or has he been preserved? No, I um I I believe the iterations, if I'm not mistaken, the iterations that were originally depicted with Oswald as part of the, uh you know the original shorts and those things, those might have reached public domain as well. Mm. Uh, so they got the rights to him just to uh, just to stamp their uh, claim on him, and then he became uh, a member of the public domain. Of course, there's all kinds of Oswald merchandise, uh, not enough if you ask me, uh, available at the parks, but uh, to each his own. Uh, so. Uh, This version uh, from Hollywood Reporter says more modern versions of Mickey will remain unaffected by the expiration of the Steamboat Willie copyright and Mickey will continue to play a leading role as a global ambassador for the Walt Disney Company in our storytelling theme park attractions and merchandise, Disney's statement said. Not every feature or personality trait a character displays is necessarily copyrightable. However, and courts could be busy in the coming years determining what's inside and outside of Disney's ownership. Correct. The, the question, of course, becomes who is going to be the sacrificial lamb who sues <laughs> Disney right back when they say, no, 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 that one's ours. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think anybody who is claiming that maybe Mickey Mouse might be their specific work, I think is going to be <laughs> that's going to be a hotly contested issue. And, uh, uh, you know, I see a lot of spicy memes going around with Steamboat Willie. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I, would, I would be, you know, be careful there a little bit because that that will earn the attention i'm sure uh, look and this is kind of guidance for everybody here i'm not a lawyer obviously and this isn't necessarily legal legal advice it's just my personal advice if you wanted to use these in commercial applications just understand you know there are distinguishing um characteristics of this version of mickey mouse that separate him from some of the later copyrighted works and as you were saying jonas um it, it, steamboat willie not Every single iteration of him might be uh, free from this copyright uh, issue as well. Care to elaborate? Well, uh, of course, uh, Mickey has been um, evolved uh, over the years. Uh, Mickey with the white eyeballs, the more modern version of Mickey. He came uh, he came to be in Fantasia, which was uh, some years after. Uh, right. And of course, Fant- that's a second video in a row where me and you have been on it and had to reference Fantasia. <laughs> Go check out WDW Pro's uh, uh, video this morning um, and you'll you'll understand more of just how spicy the original Fantasia was. Agreed. Um, there are also other things like, uh, for example, he has gloves on uh, in these more modern iterations of him. He's also including his hat in terms of the uh, Steamboat Willie version. His hands talk. go from four fingers to five fingers. So it's like, you know, that's kind of uh, something different there. Yeah. And and uh, there's there's also, of course, the, the legend here that uh, Disney, and I say the legend, that Disney has decided to make Steamboat Willie into their title card for Disney animated features. Uh, making that essentially a trademark. And I'm, I'm right. sure that they have trademarked Mickey Mouse. So if you put out something with mouse ears on it and uh, the label doesn't say that this is not a product of the Walt Disney Company, then uh, I think you're in, in 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 grave danger. In the words of Ralph Wiggum, I'm in danger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, speaking of someone who uh, might be in a bit of danger themselves, uh, last night, uh, a, a YouTuber by the name of Uncivil Law uh, Apparently, uh, did a did a live stream. Uh, here's a tweet that says, uh, "YouTube creator Steamboat Willie is out of copyright. I got my live stream deleted and a community guidelines warning for playing this public domain content. I couldn't even provide any explanation or statement as part of my appeal. Please help." So, uh, just going over uh, to the the page for his live stream, 
Uh, okay. It says this live stream has been terminated due to continuously unmonitored use of content that belongs to somebody else. Um, I've tried to talk about this uh, myself on on Pro's channel and some other channels. Um, Vash, are you familiar with how the YouTube content ID system works? Yeah, does it? Uh, I'm guessing it references works in some uh, yeah. database, maybe even including on YouTube itself and kind of uh, compares the the data streamed or the, the data yeah. provided with with those so, works so uh, the, the first person to upload something unless unless it's a teeny tiny creator generally gets the uh, the right of first refusal here they'll say oh well your content some form of your content appears over here so um say it's a video of something like um a, a song from a popular creator and you're just reading the lyrics to the song that might have resulted in a copyright strike from universal music group uh, back in the day or if there is uh, something that is public domain like uh what was it uh, the the old hercules movies uh the old old hercules not disney's hercules we're not that far yet guys don't, right you yeah, know don't get too excited uh if two channels uploaded it uh, I, I would think that the first channel to uh, do a copyright strike would be the one that would quote unquote win until YouTube can sort it out. So with Steamboat Willie, I'm sure that the Walt Disney Company has the most original form of Steamboat Willie on one of their channels right now and is able with content ID to see any channel that is uploading Steamboat Willie right now. I don't know that they're tasking one particular lawyer or something like that to go through all of the individual streams and check them out. I'm sure that there is something robotic, uh, probably some form of artificial intelligence going through and trying to determine which ones are which. So the original form of Steamboat Willie and anything that that produces a match, Disney is going to get notified and they're going to be able to say, OK, yeah, take that down, take that down. Now, there is a, an appeals process on YouTube, but the appeals process on YouTube generally favors the uh, the giant mega corporation in almost all instances, uh, even right. if even if you allow a giant mega corporation to uh, take a clip of your video, uh, and it's a like a temporary license or something like that. You almost have no recourse to say that is mine. It has to be taken down after that copyright uh, license expires. So I think in this case, uh, Disney is probably in the wrong. But it's going to be interesting to see whether YouTube favors uh, some guy who's making content. No, no offense to uncivil law, or uh, the giant mega corporation that advertises on their platform on a regular basis right and you know youtube could also be just just behind in updating their procedures for you know handling these. it could be yes these, you're these right things. it um, could be that youtube is waiting for all of this to be sorted out uh reactively instead of proactively youtube right. has never been accused of being proactive in uh, situations <laughs> like this that's true. I mean, Uncivil Law has 126,000 subscribers. I mean, they, they if in fact uh, the well former scenario uh, you detailed right there is playing out, I mean, they are absolutely making an example, which uh, you know is is kind of an alert to all of us. They're not going to go down quietly. Yeah, I, I personally am of the inclination that we just don't need to mess with it on this channel because uh, there are other fights that we need to fight. And Disney has a, probably has a vested interest in uh, um, making sure that we are very careful in what we say about the Walt Disney Company. Now, there is one aspect in which I, I and again, I have not seen the stream here because guess what? It's been taken down. There's no way for me to look. Right. There are forms of Steamboat Willie that Disney still owns the copyright to. So if this is a restoration of Steamboat Willie, or if they're just playing that title card over and over again, there are forms of Steamboat Willie that are not in the public domain right now. So that 4K, if, let's say that Cinderella uh, went into the public domain, uh, as in the Disney 1950s, probably 1951 uh, version of Cinderella went into the public domain. Well, the 2023 4K remaster does not necessarily come into the public domain with it because there's been significant transformative work uh, put into it. So I would say that the Steamboat Willie, if somebody were to, say, rip Steamboat Willie off of Disney+, Plus, which is probably the most perf perfect version of that that we have so far. I'm not right. making a comment on DNR. I'm not making a comment on uh, re reduction of film grain or anything like that. If somebody took that and put it on YouTube, Disney is 100% in the right for uh, copyright claiming. Whether or not I agree, I agree that they should do it. Sure. So, um, but uh, similarly, or conversely, I should say, if somebody takes Steamboat Willie and let's say restores it, it's him, themselves, or maybe even recreates it uh, frame for frame, but in a 
in, in kind of a superior quality version mm -hmm. that would all you know that that kind of uh, balances out let's say yeah and, that's the uh, that's going to be the interesting thing if somebody decides to and in, to kill the Disney company with kindness by restoring Steamboat Willie and making something that looks like Disney did it themselves, like a full color version of Steamboat Willie, which I think is sacrilege in some way. But uh, if somebody goes through and makes something that people would confuse it with the Disney company just for the fact that it is of such high quality, that's mm. the part where we go, huh, interesting, fascinating. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, Vash, do you have any thoughts before we wrap up here? Uh, well, a couple actually. Uh, one is it's it's very interesting. A lot of people were pointing out the ironies of, uh, you know, uh, Disney pre preventing this uh, this kind of material from falling into the public domain since they've they themselves have benefited from works <laughs> European works, for example, falling into the public domain, right, and transforming them in a way that uh, distinguishes them as Disney properties. Uh, also, too, uh, there is some thought out there as to why Disney may have chosen this kind of modern version of this Paul Ruddish version of Mickey Mouse they've been going with uh, so frequently, both um, uh, to, you know, out there to the public and also to with the parks. Uh, it's presumed that, well, that has the newest copyright on it and that kind of extends this whole thing out. So it's, it's kind of very interesting how uh, Disney's kind of playing around with this. Obviously, there was no public support uh, to support the idea of another extension act going forward, so they didn't even necessarily try, even though they've been lobbying for decades to do that it's it's this is all kind of very interesting it's a developing story for sure one that we haven't seen the last of in 2024 oh i'm conflict. absolutely sure yeah and uh just just for the sake of everyone out there who doesn't know who paul rudish is um what which version is that uh the the paul rudish version is the uh the the new shorts that have that have uh, come out recently it's it's the the series of shorts that Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at mm -hmm. Disneyland and Disney Hollywood Studios is most uh, it, it, it's adapted right. for or the, the version that they went with for those attractions. And so, I would say one of the best things to come out of the Walt Disney Company, as controversial as they are, I didn't like them at the time because I felt like they were, oh, it's like uh, Mickey Mouse, Ren and Stimpy. And now I see the humor. I see the cleverness. And it actually kind of reminds me of that 1930s style. Mickey, 1920s style. Uh, That's what Mickey, they were going I for. Say. So, all right. Well, uh, thank you everyone for watching to the end of the video. Like this video if you like this video. Uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, I am going to be on the that park. Sorry, on the pro show uh, here in uh, just a few minutes. If you're watching this in the morning when we're. Uh, releasing it. That would be January 2nd, 2023. Um, so you can look forward to uh, ripping off this video in about 95 years or I don't know, uh, after the death of the uh, creator of the video. Oh my. And it's both me and Vash that would have to die. Uh, watch the back, man. <laughs> yeah. People are going to be coming after us. And for more, please subscribe to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. I just signed your death warrant, Vash. Thank you. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.